the tree of knowledge of good and evil is the law. And when I speak of law, I speak even of the general principle, which is that you are what you do and your value is how well you do it. And that law is a principle by which behavior is regulated through the promise of reward and the threat of punishment to cause people to act contrary to the intents of their heart. And so one thing that law does is that it only cares about the resulting behavior. It does not care about the individual engaging in the behavior. It does not care about the motives behind why the person is engaging in that behavior. It only cares as to whether they engage in the behavior or not. The important thing is that you shut up and you do what you're told. We don't value as a human being. We value based on your performance and your achievement and how well you comply to the law. And we even see this with people saying like, oh, people don't respect authority like they used to, which means people don't shut up and do what they're told the way that they used to, which to me is called progress. To me, it's progress when you don't shut up and blindly do what you're told because you're told to, and you actually think it through and say, is this sensible? Is this reasonable? Are we problem solving here or blindly following rules? Because that's another thing law does, is that law causes you to value compliance to the rules over solutions to problems. It also causes you to value compliance to the rules over personal and individual value. So you don't value people, you value people's compliance to the rules. You don't value problem solving, you value problems insofar as they are in compliance to the rules. And then you even create where there's a problem that people are not complying to the rules. And you haven't even thought about whether the rules are sensible or not. Just the fact that people are breaking this rule, now we need to do something about it. We need to stop people from breaking this rule by making more rules that they're not going to comply with. So then we'll have stricter enforcement, we'll have more severe punitive measures. And in the Old Testament, under the law of Moses, they had the most severe punitive measure conceivable, which was to be stoned to death, the death penalty, but also something that was also the death penalty, which was exile. And that was actually the less merciful option. Because to be rapidly stoned to death in a matter of minutes meant that your death came quickly. To be exiled meant that your death was slow and painful by starvation, exposure. It was actually more merciful to stone somebody to death out of those two options. They were both the death penalty. Exile was just slow, painful death whereas stoning was quick, painful death. So the tree of knowledge of good and evil is the law principle. And we can see this because if we actually look at the symbol that we use to represent law and justice, you can see that it is a tree. It has the base here that are the roots. It goes up. It has branches. And then here's the fruit. So we can see that our representation of law and of justice comes from this tree. And on one side is good, and on one side is evil. And so our concept of justice is to return harm for harm in equal proportion. The harm done on this side should equal the harm done on this side. That's what we consider to be justice. So we have harm on one side equaling harm on the other side. 
You have heard it said an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, if a man smite you on the cheek, turn him to him the other also. Which is contrary to the principle of returning harm for harm. So our idea of justice is that the harm inflicted should equal the harm inflicted. And then that's justice. That's retributive payback in equal measure. So here we have a representation of Lady Justice. And I want to reuse this illustration to show something else. But here we have the tree of knowledge of good and evil. This is the scales of justice. This is the law. On one side, you put the harm done to one person. On one side, you put the harm returned to them. Here you have the sword. This is the measure, the, the instrument by which that equal harm is returned. This is the, the, the means of retribution to return equal harm for harm done. So that's our concept of justice. Now, we see in the Garden of Eden that there's a tree of knowledge of good and evil. So we have on one side good and one side evil. This is the tree, the scales of justice. And we have Eve here holding up the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And then over here, we've got a flaming sword turning every direction, keeping her out of Eden. And we have her eyes are opened, but they're blindfolded. So the tree of knowledge of good and evil is blinding her to the fact that she's the one holding the sword that's keeping her out of the garden. And if she would set down the scales here, she could take off the blindfold and say, oh, hey, I'm the one holding the sword that's keeping me out of Eden. So that's what we have here in this illustration, because Eve is the mother of us all, which means that there's some point at which we are all this one, upholding this notion that to return harm in equal measure for harm done is somehow what is considered just. But when we set down this notion and realize that true justice is actually restoration, true justice is actually to say there was harm done, now how do we restore and repair this situation? How do we heal the wounds that were inflicted rather than inflicting more wounds on those who inflicted the harm. Let's even value the one who committed the transgression enough to say, let's look at how we can alter the intents of your heart through grace. Because law is to attempt to force people, coerce people into acting contrary to the intents of their heart through the promise of reward and most notably through the threat of punishment. But grace is the intent or the attempt to change the intent of the heart so that the intent of the heart is in compliance with love, so that the intent of the heart is in compliance with value for one another because one another, we are all equal. We all have one, fa one God, one Father of all, one body, one spirit. We are all equal. And so when you see that, then that changes the intent of your heart to be in alignment with the kind of behavior that we want to see in the first place. And not through the threat of returning harm for equal harm. <laughs>